Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome back to Tag Tuesday. Today I'm here to do the B tag. The B tag was created by Jim over at Jim's Books and Reading and Stuff. Uh, our resident uh, Georgian, as in the country, uh, Booktuber has embarked on a series of alphabet tags and since uh, the name of my channel, Bookish, starts with a B, he was kind enough to tag me. Uh, just as, uh, I guess, a coincidence, and both my first and last name also start with a B, so this felt like, you know, a tag definitely for me. Uh, so let me run through the prompts here uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, answer the questions. So uh, prompt number one, and again, I'm reading from my phone, prompt number one is B is for Bildungsroman. Uh, have you a favorite Bildungsroman or coming-of-age story? And I think classically we think of uh, Bildungsroman stories as stories of a young man, you know, kind of transitioning from boyhood to manhood. And maybe a classic example of that would be uh, This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald, I think is definitely one of those books. One of my favorite authors, uh, Honoré de Balzac, wrote uh, several novels which have these elements in them. Uh, probably the most obvious one would be uh, Lost Illusions, in which Lucien Chardon, then uh, Le Boubon Pré, uh, basically uh, has to figure out how to live within uh, the world of uh, Parisian society in the 1830s and kind of having failing to uh, stick in the upper levels of Parisian society kind of uh, turns to the darker side of the underside uh, but definitely a coming of age a learning of lessons as the name Lost Illusions implied. There's even elements of the buildings Roman in uh, Balzac's Père Goriot uh, with the character Rassignac who uh, moves to Paris uh, and uh, is disillusioned in, in his own way uh, several times. Uh, and again, so we have a tendency, I think, to think of these coming-of-age stories as being more about young men, but uh, a lot of, uh, in thinking about this, I realized that a lot of Toni Morrison's novels actually are oftentimes very painful uh, and tragic coming-of-age stories. Uh, the Two Sisters and the Bluest Eye uh, come to all kinds of you know, truly awful realizations about the world in which um, young African-American girls uh, lived and grew up and what that world was like. Um, similarly, uh, that is kind of the theme of Asula with the two competing uh, kind of uh, best friends turned pseudo, I guess, enemies uh, in that book. But I, I chose for my favorite uh, kind of coming of age story. I chose the uh, four kind of uh, stories which make up William Faulkner's The Unvanquished. I have a whole video about this. Um, but in this, uh, in this set of stories, uh, young Bayard Sartoris, uh, the, the son of Colonel Sartoris, one of the most famous figures in uh, Faulkner's Yognaptofa County, uh, comes to grips with the legacy of violence uh, of his family and uh, to the realization that, that violence is not necessarily a, a good way forward. And he, he learns the truth about, uh, in many ways, he learns the truth about his father, uh, the reality uh, behind the life uh, that, that a lot of Southern people, Southern men lived, a life in which, you know, to defend their honor, they had to be willing to, to fight and kill. And Bayard Sartorius, in the end, kind of makes a different decision. So I'm going to go with The Unvanquished as kind of my choice for uh, favorite buildings, Roman. Uh, prompt number two is B is for beach. Uh, what would you recommend for a beach read? I don't go to the beach uh, very often, and when I do, I certainly don't go uh, to read. I don't know. That's just not a reading environment for me. I, I, I see people at the beach with books, and you know maybe one day uh, after my wife retires, we'll go down to the beach on a more regular basis, and I'll uh, kind of get into the idea of beach reading. But my, my recommendation for beach reading would be to take uh, a book you don't mind getting ruined. <laughs> don't take your favorite uh, carefully selected, you know, uh, trade baker paperback or hardbacks that fit in with your collection because sand and water and sun and beach food and suntan oil, lotion and sunscreen don't mix well with books. So I would just take a, the cheapest uh, or the, uh, the, the mass market paperback you are most interested in reading. For me, that would probably be some kind of a mystery or some kind of a, a spy novel, uh, uh, but that's what I would take. And then also, uh, Jim says, B is for beagles, uh, show me your dog. So here's a really brief clip of Ike and Zelda in the backyard. Get him. 
Tell that. Good girl. So uh, you can see that my backyard is really muddy. It has been raining here essentially uh, every day for about 10 days, and my backyard is more or less just turned to swamp. Prompt number three, B is for best. What's the best book you have read this year so far? The best book I've read this year so far, I think, is Nupaming. There's a close contest between this book and The Other Name by Jan Foss, which I also read this year. These two books are just so, they're so good. And you know how uh, Sean the Book Maniac describes things as Sean books. I would classify both of these books uh, as, you know, me books, as bookish books, uh, because uh, I love both of them. And, and at the end of the year, I may have... Uh, changed my mind, but I'm going to go with Nupaming as my favorite book or the best book I've read this year. Uh, prompt four, B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? Well, it's a bookstore. Uh, I, I, my favorite bookstores, for the most part, are independent bookstores. Uh, the Brazos Bookstore in Houston um, is a great independent bookstore with a long kind of tradition. Uh, a new independent bookstore in Georgetown, Texas, uh, Lark and Owl uh, Bookstore, uh, opened up a few years ago, and I've been there a couple of times. My daughter lives uh, in the Georgetown, uh, Texas area, and that's a really cool uh, bookstore. Uh, but when, in thinking about this, I, I thought about, you know, what bookstore in, in my life has probably kind of meant the most to me. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I grew up in a in a in a community in which the only bookstore was located in a mall. It was a Walden Books. I didn't want to choose that, so I thought about college and the fact that me and my friends, or me and at least my best friend, used to go uh, use book shopping. And our one of the things we did uh, is we would drive from the small East Texas community where we went to college uh, to Dallas. We'd go catch Texas Rangers games uh, in Arlington, but we also went to the flagship uh, half price bookstore bookstore in Dallas and uh, that I'm gonna call that my favorite bookstore because the memories I have associated with it and it's just a great big huge used bookstore. Uh, prompt number five, B is for banned books. Is there a book you think should be banned? The answer is no. I don't think any book should be banned. I mean banned as in the sense it can't be found anywhere. Banned as the sense it's completely censored but I, I do not have a problem with content warnings or trigger warnings on books or associated with books so that you know people don't uh, end up uh, reading something that will be upsetting to them if they don't want to. You know my personal opinion is that we should read widely things that upset us, things that uh, are unpleasant, uh, things so that we gain an experience of things that we don't have but the truth matter is if you if there's something in a book that would tri trigger you, you've probably actually experienced that thing anyway. I'm not sure you have to read about it, and I don't think there's any harm in warning people about that. I mean, I think the alternative is that you're saying you want people to be uh, to be surprised by something awful in a book, which is going to upset them. And I, I I have a hard time believing that any of us actually want somebody to be surprised by something they read in a book which would upset them uh, if they have good reason uh, to be upset. Anyway, so I just wouldn't ban any books at all. Uh, <laughs> Prompt number six, B is for Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible? My favorite book of the Bible is 3 John, and the, the primary reason why it's my favorite book of the Bible uh, is because it is the shortest uh, book of the Bible, which sounds awful, but um, being uh, not necessarily a believer uh, and having grown up in a a fairly fundamentalist Christian, uh, Protestant Christian uh, church, uh, we spend a lot of time looking uh, at the Bible, memorizing the books of the Bible, being rewarded for having read books of the Bible. And uh, being the kind of person I am, it didn't take me long to realize that I could get the same reward for reading the shortest books of the Bible as I could for reading the longest books of the Bible. So I read like, uh, well, I read all three of the all three of the books of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd uh, John. Uh, and then Obadiah from the Old Testament is, I think, the shortest. But I kind of specialized in those things. But John, 3rd John also has a, a quote in it that I like. And it says, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Uh, and I just, I like that. I think that says essentially... 
<laughs> one of the things that's important. You know, we should do good. Uh, we should not do evil. Uh, and if, you know, the idea of God motivates you to do good, to do good I'm all for it, uh, as long as we're not uh, doing evil. I think uh, we, we all benefit from that. Um, so that's my answer to the, for the favorite book of the Bible. Uh, and then prompt seven is bookshelf. Show me your bookshelves. And so here is some footage of my bookshelves. Uh, the first part of the, of the tall bookshelves on my right, where I keep poetry, fiction, alphabetical by author, and on the bottom shelf I have books of history involving things uh, outside the United States or and that's not strictly speaking true because I have some of that over here too. The bookshelf to my left, which is the second uh, bookshelf you'll see in the footage, contains my nonfiction, biographies on top, books of American history, and then books of short stories on the second to the bottom shelf. I have fantasy reference, uh, then mysteries and other things on the bottom as well as some papers having to do with some old research I did. Uh, and there's one other bookshelf in the house. I think I've shown footage of that before. Uh, and I'm not a big bookshelf tour person, so uh, I'll just leave it at that. And then prompt eight is B is for Brazil. Paulo Coelho, Paulo Coelho, the, Paulo Coelho is the alchemist, has been translated into seventy language. Have you read any Paulo Coelho? And if so, what did you think of the book? Never read any Paulo, Paulo Coelho uh, novels, not The Alchemist, not anything else. Um, I, at one point, I, I was interested in doing so, but... I think I've mentioned to you my kind of uh, aversion to self-help books. And I think The Alchemist has been so kind of marketed or, or promoted by so many people as this book that will change your life and that will, you know, and maybe that's not true at all, but because of that, I've just kind of shied away from it. I, I, I kind of shy away from, I think, uh, you know, instructional fiction, uh, perhaps, you know, fiction designed to... Uh, get you to to intentionally design to get you to change your life, even though I, I accept that fiction uh, has that impact and and that's one of the great things about fiction is kind of increasing our understanding capacity for compassion. Uh, I'm not going to tag anybody to do this tag. It's been done a long time ago, but if your channel name has a B in it and you want to do this tag, please do the tag. Uh, leave all the information about Jim's original tag uh, down below and a link to his ta his tag video. Uh, anyway, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and as always, thank you for watching.